Good evening, and welcome to The Parent Impact. I'm your host, Tapshir Cosby, and thank you for joining us tonight. This broadcast is presented to you by the National Parents Union. You could have been anywhere surfing the net and anywhere in the world tonight, but you're here with us, and we appreciate you. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. It is Tuesday, February 23rd. This month is going really, really fast. Even though it's a short month, it seems like it's going even faster. I'm probably brought on by the tirade that Mother Nature has unleashed upon us. I don't know who did this. I don't know who who made uh, you know Mother Nature mad, but she is definitely not happy with a lot of us. So we need to do better so we could stop being inundated with the snow bombs that we keep having. Um, so whatever everyone's done, please do better. I'm, I'm going to pray that we have less snow, even though we've had tons of snow this month. So let's get started with our updates. We have so many things to talk about that happened in New Jersey since the last time we met last week. So many things. So let's start with the long awaited marijuana legislation, right? We all went to the ballots in November. We signed off on our referendum question. Well, some of us, I, in in all, all transparency, full transparency, I would have liked for the bill to really talk about decriminalization first before we decided to move into this, but I'm happy that we have revisited this as we now move to pass this legislation. So marijuana legislation has been implemented in New Jersey and a few of the key points, it's going to take about six months to implement the marketplace that they're showing Um, You know, it's not going to be a a quick kind of implementation, even though there are currently uh, the locations that people who receive medical marijuana can actually visit. So they're going to build that out. So anybody who wants to get into this business, I'm urging, you know, the the people who are closest to the pain um, with this, right, people who have maybe been incarcerated due to marijuana, um, you know, can get out here and now start this business legally, right? Like start making money for your community if you can as part of this this marketplace. Um, There's no penalty for buying illegally right now. It's gonna take a few months for it to be technically legal to buy, but there's no penalty right now if you buy it illegally. Um, I'm not saying go out there and like hit your dealer. I'm just saying there is no penalty for it. Um, Also the attorney general is also calling for prosecutors to drop all pending cases which is something that we absolutely wanted to see happen. We wanted to see this decriminalized, right? It's one thing to make it a marketplace and to collect taxes from it and collect revenue, but it's something else when you're thinking about the people who who have been harmed, right? And the families that have been torn apart because of the, the marijuana laws that we have had on the books previously. So um, this may not be helping people, you know, from the past who may have been, are harmed by this law, but moving forward, it will be helpful for anyone who has current pending litigation. They're going to be dropping those um, current pending cases. Um, for anyone having less than one ounce, anyone who has been arrested for paraphernalia, um, possessing um, decriminalization possession of marijuana. So those cases are going to be dropped and they're not going to have any new cases coming in. Now, this part is where the controversy has come in, right? This was part of why it took so long for this law to actually move through the Senate, the Assembly, and through the governor's office. Possession of marijuana and alcohol for anyone under 21, because the law stipulates that you have to be 21 for recreational marijuana. So for anyone under 21, there was a lot of back and forth about what the penalties would be. So the penalties are going to be first time they're 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 stopped or you know suspected. Um, they have a first written warning. So they're going to get a written warning. And police officers are also not going to be able to stop um, youngsters under 21 if they smell it on their clothes or if they smell it in their vicinity. The second time, they're going to um, call in their parent, right? They're going to call their parent, maybe pick them up from the police station or or wherever they may be. Um, So that's kind of like a second warning. I mean, I would think calling somebody's parent is, is a pretty strong warning. I know You know, back in my day, if somebody called my mama and I was doing something in the street, she wasn't having that. I definitely wasn't going to do it again (laughs) if she called us. So I think hopefully like we we stop at that point when we call the parents. Third is um, community place or or drug treatment. So that was part of the contention. You know, a lot of people are still not in support of this because of that. Right. We don't want to 
put this out into the universe for young people to be able to imbibe, you know, potentially, I mean, lose their memory because that's the only thing that I know as far as like what marijuana does to people. There's, there's all type of conversation about what it does, what it doesn't do. Um, you know, does it make you sleepy? Does it not make you sleepy? I don't know. I'm not a doctor. I'm not here to judge people. I'm just here to share what's happening in the state of New Jersey. So this is what's happening. Um, and everyone just be careful out there in those streets, whatever you're doing, just make sure that you're careful. Second hot topic of today, um, Governor Murphy unveils the budget. We've been waiting for this, right? We've been waiting to see with all that has happened with COVID, with small businesses closing, with large businesses closed down, right? The movies are closed, schools are closed. We've been waiting to see what this budget potentially would look like. So he unveiled the budget and the budget is at $44.8 billion for the state of New Jersey. So the governor promised within that budget, there would be no tax hikes. We'll see what happens. Um, there will be no increase in New Jersey transit fares, which is really good considering for so long the buses were free when we were at the height of our, our COVID infections. Um, New Jersey Transit is also working on a bus rider bill of rights. So if that's something you want to be a part of, please look out for some of those conversations and um, virtual conversations that are happening surrounding that. I think a bus rider bill of rights is long overdue. Um, they are also they also have conversations surrounding the buses using more green technology. So if that's something that you know you're concerned about, make sure you get in on those conversations with New Jersey Transit. A three hundred and twenty million dollar tax rebate. To, to families and also specific to education, $1.5 billion is gonna be allocated to uh, pre-K to 12 education. So that's an increase of 700 million from the budget of 2020, which we desperately, desperately need with our schools. You know, we have 555 school districts in the state of New Jersey and different, you know, states of flux. We have some that are doing hybrid, some that are doing remote, some that are doing in-person, um, we, we need lots of things, right? We need to have these ventilation systems. We need to have PPE. We need to have um, uh, counseling, right? Because this, this is really, our kids are really going to need a lot of social and emotional learning from this. And they're also going to need increased um, educational tools to be able to use, whether that be tutoring or some type of summer programming for them, because we absolutely know that there's going to be learning loss that happens with the schools being closed. So that actually moves me into my next uh, topic to talk about. Schools must still give standardized tests. This year, um, according to the Biden administration. So we know that a couple of days ago, New Jersey's Board of Education, a state board of education, they pushed back the date to um, no sooner than April the 5th. And then they also submitted a request for a waiver from the federal department of education. So, all of the states who have requested that waiver, those waivers have been denied. The Biden administration has said that all states must perform some type of standardized testing. So there are some provisions with that. So schools will not be held accountable for the results of the standardized testing. States can give a shorter um, test, a remote or delayed version of the exam, and then they can lengthen the window with, with the time that the students actually sit for the exam. I'm on the fence with this one because I feel like this may be unnecessary testing for kids, right? They're, they have a lot going on. And, you know, while we do have these provisions, I do feel like the portfolio that the teachers are building for students for the everyday work that they're doing and also the assessments that they're doing in their classrooms, right? I'm all about data. We absolutely need to have data. When we were thinking about learning loss, we need to figure out how much learning loss has happened and how we can work to mitigate it and work to make sure kids have supports. But does this extra test tell us something that teachers don't already know from their classrooms that they have now? So, but either way it's happening. So we need to, to work with the schools to make sure this is happening, make sure this is something um, for students that have to take this, make sure that you're supporting them making sure that you're talking to their teachers and, and supporting the students in any way um, because they, they will have to take these standardized tests. So last update for NORC, uh, we will be getting a new safety director. Our previous, um, our current director, Anthony Ambrose, is retiring after 34 years. So he's seen NORC transform itself within the last 34 years. So thank you for your service, um, Director Ambrose. 
We will be getting a new um, chief. He's Nork's, currently Nork's deputy police chief, um, Brian O'Hare, and he's going to be sworn in on April the 1st. And he's also been in charge of um, the community engagement since 2017. So I think that he, you know, he knows a little bit about engaging the community. Um, a few months ago, maybe a month ago, there was a story that went out that said, you know, North police officers did not discharge their guns um, to any person. Um, so that's a milestone for the city. So welcome to the new director, April the 1st. And we, we know he's going to do great things for our city, making sure that he's keeping our families safe. So I'm so excited <laughs> for this guest that I have on tonight. If my husband was in the room with me, he would probably tell you, like, I couldn't sit down. I have been so excited to talk with her. I was so excited when I heard her story. Tonight's topic, we're talking to history makers for New Jersey, changing history, Black people in New Jersey who are changing history, who are getting into those history books for the, the leadership positions that they are holding. And she is going to be in the books um, in the history books for her town in Montville, New Jersey. And we are proud to have her here tonight and proud to celebrate all the achievements that she has already made and all the fantastic things that we know that she's going to do for the families in the Montville School District. So please, welcome to tonight's Parent Impact, Amaka Hour. Did I say your name right? <laughs> all right. <laughs> Amaka Thanks for having Hour. Me. So thank you, thank yeah. you so so much. I'm so excited, I'm so excited to have you here tonight. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm just just giddy <laughs> to have you here with us tonight. So I like to start off right with with asking my guests how they are. How have you been through this COVID environment with your family? Okay, thank you. So I just want to start and just say thank you so much for inviting me. Um, and just having um, a, such a great program that uplifts the voices of uh, youth and parents and minorities, especially um, during Black History Month. Um, and then I, I'm so happy to speak to you um, as a parent. Um, and Absolutely. I just want to make sure everybody understands my, my views are that of as a parent, not of the Montvale Board of Education, not of yes. the Montvale Diversity and Inclusion Committee. So this is Amika talking to you as a parent. Yes. So, yeah. Um, how has COVID-19 impacted me personally? Um, you know, there's been some positive, there's been some negative. Um, I do work in healthcare and, you know, it, it definitely impacts me um, every, you know, every time I go to work. Um, but I'll start with the positive um, because I know that it has affected uh, a lot of people in a, in a very negative way. I know the president just had... Um, a dedication to you know we've lost half a million right to this 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 disease mm. um this virus so for us uh for me and my husband and my two girls i have a seven-year-old and a three-year-old it has actually allowed us to um become closer so my husband um works in jersey city he used to commute three hours um every day yeah. Wow. So he, would, he often missed out on, um, you know, the girl, seeing the girls in the morning and also at night. So him, you know, having him here, he gets he's fortunate enough to work from home. Um, we have that family interaction. We, you know, we eat dinner, we we talk, we we were closer. Yeah. Um, but the negative aspect for me has been um, I had to dial back. Um, what I'm doing at work. I had to kind of take some hours away just because, you know, you talked about schools and how we're kind of delaying testing. Um, it hasn't been perfect for everyone. I mean, it, it has been hard for our schools and our teachers, our administrators to try to figure out how to work in this environment. With that, I have been lucky enough. Um, I have a second grader, so she goes every day, but she just goes until 1255. Okay. Um, so as a parent, what I'm doing you know, like I said, I had to dial back and I am supplementing, you know, education is important to me. I am supplementing her education. If if that's, you know, flashcards from the Dollar Tree, you know, addition, right. subtraction, if that's going on Amazon and getting a little workbook and we're doing extra pages today, if that's, you know, finding some kind of app for her to interact with, to kind of catch up on, on, on the education because they're not spending as much time in, in the schools. Um, that's what I'm doing. So 
it's it's negative in a sense, but it's positive for me because now, you know, I love how you talk about involvement. I am more involved. Yeah, I know. Yep. yep I know what yep. my child is doing. I know what her strengths and her weaknesses are. So, you know, let's say she's learning addition and I feel like she can move on to multiplication, multiplication. You know, I can supplement that and keep her ahead or I can catch her up or whatever I need, I need to do. So I try to look at the positive. I've been that way. I know it's hard in my situation. You know, by no means is that of others. I know others are going through it really hard. And um, I'm just trying to focus on the positive, uh, especially with my immediate family and stay grounded. And I noticed too, the kids, I have young kids, they kind of reflect what you're feeling. So if I, yeah, if I, think positive, they're positive. So we Absolutely. just talked like when it, when it first happened, oh my gosh, you're going to get a laptop. You know, this is so cool. You know, you can supplement your education. Oh, I found this, this fun app. That's how we try to, you know, even yep. getting the cutesy masks for the little one, like the, the Elsa and Anna or whatever she's into, you know, yes. so we, we try to stay positive. That's really yeah. the, yeah. all we can do right now. That's it. And this, mm -hmm. you know, this COVID environment, it, it, it did that, right? It, it absolutely slowed people down, right? Yeah. You know, from people who were constantly either out of their house or, you know, had to travel, you know, unfortunately some people's livelihoods were, you know, um, stopped because of it, but it absolutely made families slow down and spend more time with each other. And I definitely can say that as far as the families that, you know, I'm engaged with, they were absolutely a thousand percent more engaged with, with the school, more engaged with the teacher. Um, you know, they're sitting right next to their kids when they're on remote learning, right? They're watching what's happening. They're listening. And they're also supplementing that education, like you said, right? Because education doesn't just come from the school building, right? As parents, mm -hmm. You know, before our kids got to school, who was their teacher, right? We were their first teacher, right? We taught them how to tie their shoes and their ABCs and their letters and their numbers and all those things. So learning continues to happen even outside of the school building. So this gave us an opportunity as parents to um, continue that learning, um, but also absolutely get more engaged. You know, there, there's a lot of like funny memes, you know, and things going around saying, you know, um, you know, Johnny was like the teacher said, right? <laughs> like you now know that as a parent. <laughs> but I mean, I think I think that just speaks to you know parents getting to know their their kids a little bit more, right? And parents also getting to know the teachers who are in front of their children, um, teaching them. Exactly. In the so that was a plus. That was a plus. Um, so for the parents in in your town, um, as far as as opening plans for reopening when school started back in September, did you? have a lot of parents who were, um, you know, coming to board meetings and really trying to make sure that their voices were heard in those opening plans, um, those conversations regarding opening plans? So I wasn't really involved in the beginning, but I'll tell you, okay. we had a, a meeting yesterday and a lot of um, concern has come um, in that sense. And a lot of uh, parents are wanting, well, the ones who spoke last night, it seems that they are wanting to um, open the schools. Um, but, you know, the superintendent put out some guidelines last night. Um, it can't really give you a date, but it's kind of how Jersey's been. You know, you go red, yellow, green. So if they meet certain criteria, then the superintendent will take a look at it. Um, he's also going to get some buy in from parents and see, you know, is it really that of the majority that wants to? do this or is it just the you know the people that are, are showing up to the board meetings so right. he's going to get you know buy-in from everyone which i think that's good you know through surveys and other means just that's to kind of our way forward of course you know we would want everyone um to be in school if we can make that happen i mean i i do believe as a parent that um it is important to uh have those children have those social interactions but i also understand you know as a nurse um, you know, we have to follow guidelines. We have to make sure that we are safe. So he, like I said, he laid out a, a plan last night. Um, you have to meet certain thresholds and then we'll, we'll, we'll take a look, you know, we'll take a look and, and see what's next. So. Okay. And again, this is Amica, the parent, right? <laughs> Cannot yeah. speak for the full school board. So you're going to yeah. hear us say that, right? Just, yeah. just to clarify, this is her opinion as a parent who's also happens to be um, a history making school board member. So, <laughs> so what has been your catalyst for getting involved? I know you were part of the DEI committee 
um, mm -hmm. in your town. Um, is that something that you started? Is that something that was started by, uh, you know, an organization or just more parents? Tell us a little bit more about your your catalyst and your journey um, to the school board. Yeah, I'm so excited to even speak about this because I'm not even from Jersey. I'm from Alabama. So, yeah. She's honorary, um, everybody. We have made right? her an honorary, honorary Jersey girl. girl. <laughs> yeah. So I, I guess I'll just give a little of my background. Um so I am from Montgomery, Alabama. It's so fitting. We're talking about Black History Month. We're talking about, uh, you know, we're talking about Rosa Parks. We're talking about Martin Luther King. We're talking about the Edmund Pettus Bridge. That's where I'm from. You know, that's where I was born and raised. And uh, my dad is an immigrant. He is Nigerian. Um, he won a lottery to come over here to get an education. So that's how he and my mom met. Um, it's just very interesting. So education has been important and it's been ingrained um, since I was small and understandably considering how my dad came over. So I remember at a very young age, um, there's a magnet school that one of the first um, that started in uh, my town, Montgomery. And I remember my dad had to sleep uh, like in the hallway to get a spot for me. And wow. magnet schools, I don't know if people are, are familiar, but they really set you up for college. Um, there are a lot of AP courses, advanced curriculum. And there weren't, you know, many minorities. So I look back on that and I'm I'm thankful. So him doing that, he set me up. He helped me understand how important education was. Fast forward, you know, college. I'm from a, you know, poor family. Um, there are four of us. I'm, I'm one of four, the only girl. I've got three brothers. Um, and our parents couldn't afford to pay for college. So it was either you're going to get a scholarship or you're going to take out some loans and pay for this. Right. Fortunately, um, I was able to uh, apply to and I attended the United States Military Academy at West Point. I think a lot of people know, you know, us being in this region, um, where that is. It's up in, um, in, in New York and it is the premier um, military institution in the world. Um, so I spent eight years in the Army as an officer. Um, and my husband and I, we actually met at West Point. And, at, you know, we dedicated eight years and we said, hey, we are ready to settle down. We had done um, a tour to Iraq, Afghanistan, 12, 12 months in, in Iraq. No, our first was 15 months. I'm like 23, 24, 15 months leading 100 soldiers in, in Iraq. Um, yeah. Then the second was Afghanistan, 12 months. I mean, that's a long time to be apart. That is. And, you know, if you Thank put you both for your service. Thank you both for your oh, service. Oh, you're so welcome. Of course. And you put kids in the mix and it makes it even even more difficult. So we made the decision. Um, we actually our last duty station actually was West Point. Um, and at that moment, I decided I wanted to um, start a career in nursing. So I ended up going to school in Westchester. He got into this great we uh, veterans program down in Jersey City. So we're like and I was pregnant. We're like, man, we got to find somewhere to kind of, you know, halfway, like meet each other. Halfway. <laughs> right. Right. So I'm looking, we're looking and we kind of naturally fell upon Bergen County because it's like right there. And um, so we found a house that rented. It was hard because we had two dogs, which we still have, uh, mm -hmm. but nobody wants dogs. So, well, <laughs> yeah, right. They're loud. They're loud. <laughs> right. So we ended up um, landing here in Montvale. Uh, fast forward, you know, both kids are born. We decided this is where we want to be. And then we said, hey, you know, again, think back to what I said about, you know, I'm in second grade, my dad's fight, how he came over, you know, West Point, all that. Education, of course, is the the front, you know, it's in the front of my, my mind. Yes, so it's, I, it's nature and nurture for you, right? right? Like you had right. it all your life. So your, your dad exactly. was your advocate. So you knew how to be an advocate for your children. I love so that. I, said, I am going to make sure my kids have better than what I had. So I, I looked and I said, hey, Montville, actually where we are, it has great schools. So let's buy. So we bought a home. And unfortunately, shortly thereafter, we've had some um, some negative experiences being here. My, my daughter has been through um, some hard, hard things. Um, and in that moment, I really kind of was feeling down. But I will say to you, there's a series of things that happened that led to the, my advocacy. So in that moment, um, maybe a few months later, one of my, I didn't know he was my neighbor then, he had a rally, like a rally. This is when like things are going on with George Floyd, there's civil unrest. He felt the need to have a rally and bring everyone in the town together. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I should go to this. But my neighbor encouraged me to go. We went, 
Um, and it was beautiful. And we met a bunch of like-minded people. Mm-hmm. I was able to speak my piece. And in that moment, I'm going to tell you, I felt safe. I'm going to say that, safe. That's and true. literally probably two months later, these youth, the youth here are amazing. And I love it. Like I said, I love how you empower youth. The youth yeah. here are the ones who champion for this diversity and inclusion committee. Yes. Yes. I love that. that is- I love it. New Jersey has the yeah. best students. Sorry, everybody else, but we have the They're best students. Really amazing. Good. Really are. I'm gonna shout out Riley and Alyssa. <laughs> you guys are amazing. Um, so they championed for that. And I guess they had heard my name somewhere and they they had me sit down with the mayor and talk. And they ended up deciding that they wanted me to be the chairwoman. So I was like, okay, sure, I guess. You <laughs> know, whatever. I'll do it. You know what I mean? I'll do it. I was nervous, but I'll do it. Right after that, um, the election happens and I get this call, I want to say probably two months ago um, from the superintendent. He's like, hey, I'm good. Nice to meet you. Um, you know, just welcoming you to the Board of Education. And I was like, are you talking to me? Like who? You can't confuse me. because there are How many numbers are there? So it, it was me. <laughs> but he's like, yeah, you won. And I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, you won. I write in. And I write in. Wait, let's, let's pause in. at that really fast. Buy right in, right? right? In. Like, the well, community it wasn't that, it wasn't that penny before you go, but I mean, still, like, yeah. that's, that's hard true. to do as a write in candidate, right? It's yeah. hard to even win as a write in candidate, so Definitely. let that sink in a little bit, everybody. Definitely. So, I guess in that moment, I was like, wow, like, these people, I don't know, like, I just uh, in a, a moment of just sheer joy, like. There are people who actually believed in me and I didn't even know they believed in me. Right. Yes. Right. Like, yes, they believed in me enough one to become the the, the chairwoman for this committee. And then now right. they believed in me enough to become a, a member of the board. Right. So it really right. wasn't even I mean, it, it, it's just when we talk about allies, I just I have been surrounded by some really, really amazing people and allies and allyship is so important yeah that's why i'm here it so really good. is it really yeah. is and i am grateful i am so grateful for yep. for the allies that i have the friends the family that i have in my life yeah yeah and that community support i love it i love that your community rallied around you i mean we just met you know 30 minutes ago and i think you are amazing and oh. you know i would absolutely and I w- i'm going to continue to rally around you you know, oh. I just feel like you have a fantastic spirit. I feel like, you know, you you know, you're, you know, you, you may not have known it when you first got, you know, into this position, but I know that you know the role that you're going to play for families in your community, right? And and the way you're going to think about educating the children in your community to make sure that families and children have what they need um, to have a great life, to have a great life. Like I feel that in your spirit. So thank you so much. And and, and thank you to yeah. your allies who, who had you. your back and rallied around you. Um, they 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 knew to lift you up because they they saw something in you you know that you may not even have seen in yourself. But you're a superwoman, so I know you you had that spark. You had that spark. You know how we do. <laughs> you know how we do. We get that spark, and, and it gets it goes gets popping. So I love that. I love um, just the whole you know uh, community. I love community surrounding you. The community support that you received. So what do you envision being like one of um, like your impact? on your community now as, as a board member? So I'd say as a board member, um, and really I think the, the work of the, you talk, you mentioned the diversity and inclusion committee. I think that's kind of, I see that as being um, intertwined and I just want to talk more about the diversity and inclusion committee. Um, Cause we're so new, but we've done so much in such a, a short period of time. Um, so the diversity and inclusion committee by no means like you know we talk about um the committee or the the um community rallying behind me we have been through so much let me tell you this is not easy this is not easy this is not easy work yeah um and we've done simple things like our first was we started right around the census and it was to get people counted um okay. not, people who are who are are underrepresented, you know, people yes. who 
are afraid to speak because they don't feel like they have a voice. We reached out to those communities. And I remember even just printing flyers, something as simple as printing flyers in Spanish, you know, for Spanish speaking um, residents. Yeah. Um, so that was our start. Next, we did, we have a huge South Asian uh, community here. And they're really, it's sad that they're really not, haven't been recognized uh, that much, mm -hmm. but we did something simple. Um, we had a Diwali celebration for them. Um, okay. And we made sure that they felt welcome. We had them come up dressed up in their traditional clothing and talk to us um, about Diwali and show us how they do their Rangoli, how they celebrate. Um, just recently, yesterday at our board meeting, our committee um, presented books. We donated books in support of Black History Month to our um, our libraries, uh, just to make sure that our children, our students, have diverse characters available to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's the it, it seems like small things, but it's it's things that should a difference be happening, <laughs> making right. a difference. And, right making people feel welcome. Like that's the whole point. And that's why, I don't know. It just feels like that's why I'm here. Like I never would have been one to speak out because honestly, when I told you about that feeling safe, um, there were moments where I didn't feel safe. I didn't feel like my voice was heard. And again, this is me talking as a parent, as a person, right. as a citizen sure. living in my town. I didn't feel like my voice was heard and I didn't really know how to amplify that. But now that I have been given this platform, it is definitely my mission to bring awareness to my town. And I think awareness is key. Awareness. Yes. Who around you, right? Who are these citizens that live next door to you? Who are these, these students that go to your schools? What needs do they have? Exactly. How do we make sure that their voices are heard and that they can um, come to the front and be seen, right? Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And then they have they have the courage to speak. Yeah. And so have, they is, also have somebody representing them. Right. Like somebody exactly. a champion, championing the things that, that they need to have in, in their lives. And people always and often say representation matters. Well, it does. It really does. You know, you need to feel safe. You need to feel like your voice is being heard. You really do. So I hope that through our diversity work. Um, and through my, you know, my presence and uh, what I am doing for the Board of Education, I, I really hope that um, people do feel like they have someone they can speak with. Like they feel like they belong in this town. You know, they have just as a right as anyone else. They live here. You know, they live that's here. Right. So why that's shouldn't right. they feel welcome? So that's. that's right. That's the impact that I'd like to 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 have on others, you know. And then, you know, for those who who don't look like me, like I said, it's it's about awareness as well. You That's need right. to know. You need to know. We're sitting here, you know. Like I said, education is important, but we all want to set our children up for success. You know, the world yeah. is moving towards a global right global market. That's right. Diversity and inclusion That's is right. important. People are not gonna, you know, not everybody looks the same, right? Yep. Right. We don't have the same upbringing. We don't, you know, we don't have the same skin tone. We may not have been raised in the same areas, exactly. I mean, but it, it doesn't mean that we don't have a commonality. Right. We, we have right. a common a shared commonality just as human beings on this planet, living on this planet and, and trying to do the best that we can every single day. But we have more we have more things in common than, than not in common. Right. So I think that's something we when we get to the crux of who we are as people. We really need to remember that. And make sure that we're looking out for each other, each other, um, and recognizing the humanity in each other, right? And I think, I think with you being, you know, specifically the first black woman on your board, you have now opened the door, right, mm -hmm. for future generations to see what you've done and say, I can do that, right? I can be that, right? Now they they know that they can be seen, that they can be heard, and they can also have a place in leadership. Um, in your town, in your community, and make sure that their voices are being heard and the things that they want to see actually happen. So that's, that's the best for me. It's so important for me also, like I said, I'm a mom of two Black girls. It is very important for them to understand and know that their voice counts, that they matter, that they yeah. can do anything, anything, absolutely anything they want to be. That absolutely. is so important. So that's that's also 
you know, one of my biggest, right? That's one of yeah. my biggest impacts. Do, do not take no for an answer. That's I mean, right. Sky's right. the limit. Sky's right. the limit. Yeah. Little, little girl, look at us. Little girl with a big name. Correct yeah. them every yeah. single time. Every single yeah. time. Let them know how to say your name right the first time. <laughs> yep, right? Right? My daddy taught Correct me that. every single time. <laughs> My daddy taught me that. Yeah. My mama told me that. Correct. Yeah, every, time. Right? every single time. Make them say mm-hmm. it right. Have sheer. Have sheer. <laughs> Amaka. Like those are. Exactly. Her name. <laughs> so what advice would you have for, for a, a parent, right? In, in another city, maybe in New Jersey, maybe across the nation um, who, who, you know, was like you not sh- unsure if this mm-hmm. was their path, unsure mm-hmm. if they had a voice to bring to something like the school board, because you know, New Jersey is facing a lot of firsts in our leadership. I'm sure this is happening across the country, you know, and it's not just, you know, for black people. It's it's all kind of nationalities are now being the first. Um, so what advice would you have for people across the country and in New Jersey um, for running for like a school board, for like taking the leap? So I think first and foremost, before you even go on that journey, um, you got to get involved. You got to know what's going on. And it's not just the big election, like the presidential election. You have to be involved. There's a race. There's a there's a, 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 you know, a race every year. Right. You need to vote in in every election. (laughs) Every single one. That's Right? right. Because especially, you know, when you get down to the to the state and local level, these elected officials are making an impact on how you spend your taxes what is being taught to your children and you need to understand what's going on. And I'll say also things have gotten a bit easier in a sense for us because everything's on zoom, right? Yes. You can literally put in, put on your headphones or whatever you need to do while you're cooking. It's, you know, once a month or whatever, 30 minutes of your time, put yourself on mute. Turn off your screen, you want people to see you and just listen to what is going on. I think that was my biggest, like, I I just didn't, I I, I didn't know where to begin. And I say, start there just to know what's going on, what's important. Then start reaching out to those um, elected officials. And not only, I mean, we're so quick to critique, but you got to offer solutions too. Absolutely. Yes. Come, yep. Right. It's yes. easy to critique, but come with solutions and then not only offer the solution, be a part of that solution. Yes. Right. Be a part of this change. Get your name out there. You know, get involved. Right. Something right. simple as like the the PTO, we call it here. PTO, PTA. Um, get in there. Right. Involving in sports. Get your name out there. Let people know That's who right. you are. That's right. Um, and That's then like, even if your kids don't like it, because I know my kids yeah. hate it, hate it. Right. Hate it when I came to this school. Cause everybody exactly. knew, it, right? You're such oh, you're such a such mom. You know, even now when I see I kids in the street, they'll call me. And depending on like which kid, you know, they're like, hey, you're Ty, hey, Tahir's mom, or like, hey, Tahir's mom. And this is why my kids actually don't go to shop right with me. Because I'm in there for like an hour and a half. I always see somebody I know. I'm always having a conversation with somebody and they're just like, oh, like we don't even want to go out with you anymore because everyone knows who you are. And I'm like, it's because I'm in it. It's because I'm out here. You know, I'm talking to people. I'm making these connections with people. And it's, it's just who I am. You know, it's just who I am you, as a person. You have to. You have to make these connections. And then I talk to you. You know, I've said allies. I can't even emphasize this enough. Like. This is exhausting work. I'm telling you, we've hit so many stumbling blocks, um, just committee alone. Um, And if you don't have allies, you will go nowhere. So you have to build those relationships. You have to um, let yourself be visible. And allies are so important, right? Get people on your side. um, Let them understand what you're trying to do, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. And I I love that you said that, right? That this is hard work, right? This is, and it's, it's, it could be thankless work, you know, like you don't get a pat on the back, you know, every time you, you, you make a small incremental win towards something for families or children, you know, you know, in your heart that you put all your energy into it, you put all of your time into it, but you know, you, you're not, they're, they're not, you know, a lot of, uh, parent awards, 
<laughs> you know, to get, I mean, we have to give ourselves our own rewards, you know, as parents and, and then thinking about not only the work that you do for your children, but now the work that you're going to do for an entire district of children, you know, as a school board member. So thank you for saying that. Cause you know, we, we try to make it look so easy, you know, as moms, we're like, yeah. it's all good. We're good, but it is hard work. It's, it's rewarding, but it absolutely, absolutely is, is hard work. It is, so it is, thank it you. is extremely exhausting. And yeah. I'm telling you, if I didn't have allies, I don't even know some days if I could move forward. Like yeah. it is, it is, but it's necessary. You know, that's what yeah. pushes me forward. I'm like, I, like I said, my children, all these, you know, other children, whether that be, you know, disability, sex, you know, sexual orientation or whatever, mm -hmm. they have just, you know, the same rights as everyone else living in this town. They are citizens. And they deserve it. So guess what? I'm gonna fight for you. That's I'm right. gonna fight for you. That's and right. if I didn't have my allies sometimes pulling me, you know, pulling me up and saying, keep going, um, yeah. I, I don't know where I would I would be. So yeah. well, so thank important. you so much for that. Well, you have us as your allies now, right? <laughs> Human Impact, thank all of you. our Human Impact you. network behind you. Um, yeah, you have just joined the National Parents Union. Woo! So now you have you know, <laughs> thousands of parents now behind you. Right. If you ever need us to come to your town, um, uh -huh. don't don't be. Be surprised if y'all see me near Montville. Like, don't be surprised. Oh, you may show up at the school board meeting or something. Um, so, you know, we are now part of your group of allies. Um, and we are going to support you and make sure that we are helping you to elevate your voice and elevate the voices and experiences of families in, in your community. As, as long as we have uh, air in our lungs to do, we are going to support you. So last question. Um, I would love to talk to you all night. I, I know. You know. I like, okay. Talk all night. <laughs> talk all night. <laughs> so last question. Um, you know, and we like to ask all of our, all of our guests this. Okay. What is your parent impact? Okay. The one that you've made so far and maybe one that you'll make in the future. Okay. So I think my parent impact is learning, like I said, to be an advocate. Right. Um, and learning how to build my children up, all our children up, this whole community's children um, and let them know that they can accomplish great things. Right. I think we also have to know um, as advocates, as people who are allies, um, as parents, as a community, how to be resilient. Everyone knows, you know, COVID happened. It happened to everybody. OK, everybody's going through. Um, some tough times right now in some way or shape or form, everyone has been affected, but we've got to learn how to be resilient, learn how to adapt and learn how to overcome. And I'll tell you, these children are definitely more resilient than we give them credit for. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, yeah, absolutely. Try to, right. Try to remain positive. Um, again, the allyship, right. It's, it's so important um, to have allies and for our allies to just, build us up, right? Give us words of encouragement and, and, and to actually put in the work, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think it's also important for us as advocates. I think this is the biggest thing that I'm going to have to learn for myself and it's okay. And I'm, 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 you know, reckoning with it. It's okay also to know when to um, take a break, right? Whether that's as a parent, whether that's as an advocate, you know, um, and take a moment to step back because if, you don't have the energy, um, then how can you affect change, right? right? That's right. Right. And I guess what I want to see in the future, um, I think I'd look, I'd like to do more, more mentorship, right? I'd, I'd love to see myself evolve into that um, mentor role, and whether that's you know someone who looks like me, whether that's someone who um, you know is a is a younger person that's coming up. Um, I would love to just encourage, you know, those around me and see how I could um, help them, right, come up um, in the same way that I have, help their road become easier, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that that is the impact I'd like to see. And I feel like the impact um, that I have made. So I really appreciate, you know, your time. And I, so it's so happy. It's so just energized. Like this, this is the things that we need to like help yes. us 
understand how important this is. And that's what I was saying with, you know, Al, I have an ally in you now. And I absolutely do. You absolutely have so much energy, right? Yes. As a result. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking your time to come and talk to us tonight. Like I said, I was so excited to meet you. And now, you know, we've had this girlfriend conversation. Uh, we've embraced you, you know, as an honorary New Jerseyan. You are one of us. You got to, you know, do the hand signs and, you know, do, do the talk like us, how we do. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you again for, for being our special VIP uh, guest tonight. Aww. And we really appreciate you coming and talking. And um, hopefully we can have you on again, you know, maybe a few months down the line after you kind of, you know, get into the role and, and we can talk a little bit more. Or if this is something else, you know, that you might want to come in and talk to us about, please let us know. And we absolutely in touch. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Again, thank you for having me. And I appreciate what you are doing. This is beautiful work. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And thank you to all your supporters who we see in the comments. You, you yes, definitely have um, some my allies. Your, allies my allies. Are bomb. your allies are bomb. So thank you, allies. <laughs> we appreciate you so much. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. So another great episode of the parent impact. Like I said, I was so excited to talk to uh, Amaka today. She's so great. She's so great. So Montville, like I said, you might see me there. If you see me pop up, you'll see this this lady with these dreadlocks. You'll know it's me. Say hi. You know, let's 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 get into this conversation. Um, let's make sure that we are being allies to each other and amazing neighbors together in these communities in New Jersey. So, still Black History Month. We are celebrating um, leaders in this state. Um, also. Every Family Vote, right? That is one of our campaigns for the National Parents Union. Um, every Family Votes, every election, every time. That is our slogan that we say. We're going to continue to build our muscle for voting, right? All politics truly are local. You really have to focus and get yourself educated on what's happening in your local communities. Um, learn more about who's in office, right? And hold them to task, hold them to task for the things they said they were going to do. Um, all elected officials, all of our state officials are up for re-election this year in New Jersey. So start learning more about who they are, um, who's in your district, what did they say they were going to do, Keep, hold them accountable to, to do the things they said. And if you don't like the job that they're doing, then my suggestion is to run for office yourself be that person in office. So again, the National Parents Union membership applications are open. Check us out, www.nationalparentsunion.org. If you want more information about Parent Impact, check us out on Twitter, check us out on Facebook. We're here every night, uh, every Tuesday night, 6 p.m. here to do our live show and talk to some amazing guests. So thank you so much, everybody, for being here and we'll see you next Tuesday. Have a good night. Thank you.